Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today I'm going to talk about how you can never lose a lead again or a conversation again inside of high level. Let's dive in. Okay, so we encountered a problem inside of high level over the last three months when we started delivering a lot of B2B leads into our high level account. We do a lot of kind of closing via SMS and Google Docs, and we don't really jump on sales calls at all inside my agency. So it's very important for us to be able to track when someone wants to talk to a human because we use a sales and uh, AI and chat GPT for all of our kind of conversations. But when they want to, we ask them if they want to chat to a human, right? And when they say yes, it's very important that we get notified of that. But because we've got so many leads, when we get notified of that lead and we go in and respond to them and ask them a question, if they don't get back very quickly, it gets lost in the conversations tab, okay? There's just so many leads, which is a really good problem to have, but we found my sales team was just missing too many opportunities, right? It was a bit of a, um, it, was, it was tough to see, all right? And by the way, if you, wanna, if you want to know how we got so many leads into high level and filled our pipeline and our opportunities and all that type of stuff, we've got a video here on how we did 10,000 B2B leads. I think it was in about, I can't remember the title of the video, but I think it was about eight weeks. It's really cool stuff and we're able to grab their name, email, and their best phone number so they can engage with our AI chat um, GBT sales Android, which is very cool, but that's, I get excited about it, but I don't want to kind of talk about it in this video. You should check out the video though. So we've figured out a way just like this last week to kind of get everything organized, all right? And may or may not work for you, but if you are someone that does have a lot of leads inside the high level account and it's just kind of overwhelmed, then this is really going to help you get organized and you know make more sales essentially. It doesn't matter what you're selling. For those of you who know me, I'm not really a tech person, but Graham is a high level guru. He's in my office and he helps with all this type of stuff. And I'm gonna pass you over to him to show you how he solved this problem for me and how we're not missing any leads now. And I'm super pumped about how, that, how much of an ROI that's gonna make. So I'll pass over to him now and I'll see you at the end. Hey guys, uh, thanks Dan. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is how we kind of have set up our reply sweeping, as we call it. Um, so we get in a probably about 500 leads a day, um, and they're getting automated SMSs going out via our sales Android. And there's a lot of call to actions for them to reply back uh, so we can engage them in conversations. Now, what we found, it was quite easy to manage it at the start with less leads, but now we're getting so many leads in a day and so many conversations are being started we're obviously getting notifications when people reply back to our CTAs, but when the salesperson or the tapper replies back to them, we realized we didn't have a process in place really to make sure that we followed up with the follow-up. Um, so people are replying back to the tapper or the salesperson um, and then we're getting lost uh, in just the pure traffic of conversations. So we've developed this way to try our best to make sure that no one gets lost anymore. So we squeeze every little bit of ROI out of our uh, our leads and we want to practice what, what we preach, basically. Um, so we thought we'd show you guys how we do it because it may help you if you're having a similar issue about how to keep up with all the replies that are coming in. Um, so firstly, we're going to go to the Opportunities tab. And we've created a specific pipeline for this. Uh, this is in a demo account, by the way, just so we can show you exactly uh, how it works. Ours is slightly different, um, which I'll show you. So there's three pots here. Uh, one is reply to the CTA. So that's the first reply they were, uh, they do to your kind of automated um, messages that are asking for a reply. If they reply to one of them, they'll go in here. Uh, now for us, we've got loads of automated messages, so we have multiple pot ones. So we'll have one reply to CTA, one reply to chat widget, one reply to um, SMS, one reply to email, that that kind of thing. But for simplicity's sake, because I know a lot of people don't have all those CTAs, they just have one. We're just going to do it very simply with pot one, pot two, and pot three. Now your pot one, which is one dot reply to CTA. That is where people get put in if they reply to any of your automated me messages. Pot two, this is a manual uh, thing where the tapper or the salesperson, we call them tappers in, in, in Flex, the salesperson replies to pot one and then they move them into pot two, tapper replied, so they know that they have replied to them um, and we're waiting on a reply from them. Pot three is waiting for a reply. Now, what this means is that 
they've just replied to the tapper. So that this is an automatic thing we've set up uh, in our workflows, which I'll show you how to do in a sec. Um, but basically, if they reply to the tapper, they get moved to pot three. So when the tapper comes in every morning, he, he can see how many people have replied to him, how many people have replied to the CTA, and how many people haven't replied to him yet. So he, he, he can do a follow-up. So then he can reply to the pot threes, which is three dot waiting for reply. And then once he's replied to them, he moves them back into tapper replied, um, ready uh, for them to reply back. And it will keep on going into pot three. And they're going to keep on manually moving it back into pot two um, to make sure that he can like keep track of any replies that have come into his messages, um, not just the automated ones. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the, how the pipeline works. Um, if they if they do reply to a CTA, uh, we will uh, notify the tap with an internal no notification. So that's how they'll know. They'll also see it in this pot here. So it's fair, they they get hit with two notifications basically so they can look in this pot and they get an email notification to their email when someone has replied to a cta um and let me just show you the automations how it makes how it works for pot two and pot three basically so we're going to go into this top one here cool okay so the first up is kind of this this one here so if you have a certain cta you can um if it's just one, you can have it in your generic workflow where you're automating the messages to go out. Um, so for example, say you've got a five SM, five SMS nurture sequence that they get one a day to try and get them to reply or something like that. You'd have a wait step, um, which would probably be wait for contact reply or time out after a day. Um, and then if they do reply, then that's when it will go down um, and they'll get notified. Um, the tap will get notified because you can do in the workflow uh, any customer, I'm just about to show you when this loads up. Um, if someone replies to one of your messages, uh, you can uh, set triggers for a workflow to send anything really, automations and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can do it off of like an actual workflow. So if, if they reply to a specific workflow, that can sometimes um, trigger a workflow, another workflow. Okay, cool. So this um, is basically how we set up the customer reply. So we, we have a chat widget, SMS is going out and emails. So you can do uh, different ones if you want. So different ones so you can customize the internal no notification you send. Um, but this is how we do it. So the trigger will be customer replied. And you can do like a reply channel is chat widget. Uh, this one would be SMS. And this one is email. Uh, you can do phrases. So if you're asking to, to send back a certain phrase, you can trigger a customer replied off of that, off of a, a, a reply phrase. Um, you can do whatever you want, really. But as long as you're getting um, the customer replied in uh, to here, um, then that's perfect. Uh, and then, yeah, you want to just set up uh, your pipe, uh, your pipeline like this. So you have your reply sweeping into the first first pot, contact name, um, and that. Then we want to add in a if else, and nope. We want to add in an if else function here. And this is going to check if it's got a certain tag. Because if the tapper has replied to them, we don't want them going back into pot one. Where's the... There we go. So we want to go and find contact details. And then tags includes uh, let's go tap a reply. And we want to add in another condition and we want to go tags again includes Uh, to reply ongoing. I'll show you how these tags are added. Make sure it's all, uh, and then save action, and then save that. 
So if the tapper has replied, we don't want them going into this one. You want to move this, move, move action to there. Save that. So basically, yeah, if the tapper has replied, you don't want it going into that pot. Uh, if it if they haven't already replied and this is the first time they're they're applying, they can go into the first pot. So that's that workflow. Let's have a quick look at the other two. Now, when they are added to the tap reply pot, they will get one of those tags added. And this is how we do this one. So tap replied. And so this one basically, um, pipeline, pipeline stage changed is tap or apply sweeping. So once they're added into that pipeline, you want to add um, a tag. So the first if else condition that we've got here is do they have any of the following reply tags? Which is tap or apply and tap or apply ongoing. Okay. If they don't have any of those tags, it means this is their first reply or the first time the tap has replied to them. So you want to add tap or reply. If they do have one of those tags, we want to go down the yes route and then there's another condition to be like have we got tapper reply ongoing now if it's if they've replied once to the tapper and they've got this tag already uh, but they haven't got the tapper reply ongoing they'll go down the no route and they'll get the tapper reply ongoing which means they're, they're a bit of a warmer lead because they've had more than multiple they've had multiple messages with the tapper basically if they already have both then it just ends there you can carry on carry on carry on to tag them as like one two three four five tapper replied um that way to really see how engaged they are with the with the tapping process or the sales process um but we've, we've just gone for two but yeah as, as i said you can carry on down uh quite easily um and then the last one is basically um how we move uh the prospect from tapper replied pot to the waiting for reply pot so in this one, it's triggered off customer replies again, I believe. Yep. So all customer replies go in here. Uh, we have a wait five minutes because sometimes on high level you can get uh, stuck in a loop and they they pause uh, your workflow and you have to get, get them to unlock, unlock it. To protect you against that, you just wait five minutes. Um, so basically, there'll be a five-minute delay for them replying and being moved to waiting for a reply, which I don't think is the worst thing. Uh, you can take out it if you want, but just be aware that if the person is replying too quickly or replying very quickly to you, this could get stuck in a loop. And what we want to do after they've replied, we want to see if they've got a tap or reply tag. If they ha don't have a tap or reply tag, we remove them from the workflow because they've obviously uh, either replied to a CTA or... That's probably the only only reason why they've replied to a CTA or they've sent in a message to ask a, qu a question. Um, so they're not they're not ready to be here yet because they haven't been at it. So the tapper hasn't responded to them yet. So they should all be in pot one. Any first reply should be in pot one. Uh, so we don't want them in this uh, workflow. So we remove them for that workflow. If they do have a tapper reply tag, which you can see here, which is either tapper reply or tapper reply ongoing. Uh, they go down here, we, we, we remove the opportunity uh, from the uh, reply sweeping pipeline, which would be tapper replied. We remove that opportunity and then we add the opportunity waiting for reply. And then that's when they'll get added back there and the tapper can go in and have a look who's um, who needs replying to first. And in order of priority, it'd probably be your pot, pot three is your first priority because they're your hot leads that are having conversations with you. Then it would be uh, your first pot, people who have replied with a buzzword to your uh, automated SMSs and emails um, and, and your CTAs in those. And then the next, the last pot is the pot two. That's where you can chase people up for people who haven't replied to your um, salesperson's responses. Now let's just go have a look at an example, if we can get into contacts. Okay, so here we're on the contacts tab, so we can see the contacts. So we've got a couple of test contacts in here. Um, so as you can see, we've got a few um, tags in there. Um, one's already got tap reply, so we'll just pop in here just to show you how the process. 
so you'd come in uh you can do it in context or in the pipelines opportunities tab as well uh, you can click on each individual person uh sometimes it's easier in context uh to make it like a, a smart list i'll show you i'll actually do that in a sec um but basically well, what you'd want to come in and do is you'd want to they, they, they'd have a message here they've messaged back in from the uh cta and you just go uh send the sms Uh, you can just type in whatever you want, like so. You can either send now or you can schedule a time that you want it sent, especially if you're dealing with multiple different time zones. And once you've sent that or scheduled it, what you do is uh, your tapper or salesperson would go over here to opportunities and you click the little edit button next to um, reply to CTA, reply sweeping. You let this populate and then you just go and change the stage to tapper replied. And you'd update and then once that's done they're in a tap of replied stage uh, and they'll be ready if they reply to that they will be automatically put into waiting for reply um, if you wanted to if you're not a fan of you using the opportunities tab which I know a few people aren't you can make a smart list and you can do it like this you can go on to filters you can go to pipeline go to pipeline stage is and then you can just select apply and that will just show you who's in um, that stage you can save that as a smart list you can be uh, pop one and then you can go in and you can amend like so edit you got two apply save as new and you can just do pot two or whatever you want to call it and then once that's saved you can then again go in amend waiting for apply apply save as new and you can do it as pot three save and then you'll have three smart lists at the, at the top. Uh, you can go into manage smart lists and change their order, uh, like so. There we go. Go to smart lists. And oh, it hasn't changed it, unfortunately. But yeah, you can change that around. Let's just see why that hasn't done. Cool. And you can even change the global status. So, so you can share it with everyone. Um, not sure why it's not changing, but yeah. Um, and that's basically how this uh, this works. Um, it's very good. It's really helped us out. Um, so I would highly recommend it. If you want this snapshot, uh, so you can load it up to one of your uh, accounts, please let us know and we can share that across with you. Um, and if you haven't used Go High Level, but you're interested in doing it, we, uh, we actually have a 30-day 30, 30 free trial if you sign up with our link. Um, normally, it's a 14-day trial. Uh, the 30 days, it just allows you double the time to see if it's right for your business. Um, so it should be in the description below. Um, so have a look for that. Uh, and yeah, if you like the video, please give it a like. If you've got any questions, comment below. Uh, and yeah, please subscribe to our channel to be the first to know when we make more videos like this. Um, but thanks a lot for listening, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you, Graham, so much for that. Um, I'm glad I have you on my team because I couldn't handle, I couldn't do all this type of stuff. I'm not techie at all. I did mention before that we are pointing traffic, our B2B traffic at our sales Android, and that actually closes people and qualifies them and is able to do all sorts of cool stuff based on the criteria we want. We've actually got like a demo link where you can go in and have a go at as well and try and break it, do whatever you want, have a play. Um, I'm not gonna try and sell you anything. It's just cool to see how it all kind of works, right? So below in the description box, there will be a link to our sales Android. Um, give it a go and tell me what you think in the comments section. Also, if you've liked this video and you want us to create more like it, please give us a thumbs up. And of course, so you're the first to know when any new videos are coming out, please subscribe to our channel. Um, I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll speak to you soon.